Well, um, I promised you guys a little bit of a rant. So let's try to make it a little bit of a rant. You know, I still remember when I was in school, there's a lot of things I don't remember. You know, I'm 67 years old. I've been reporting since July of 1979. Have done probably a little bit of everything, but I remember being in school and I remember that feeling of everybody else is better than I am. What made me think I could do this? Am I ever going to get paid for doing this? Am I ever going to feel like I'm okay at doing this? Um, even after I was certified, I sat there and second guessed myself, you know, uh, maybe they made a mistake. <laughs> I failed the test two different times, uh, missed it by five, missed it by two, and then I got a certificate. And I, all I could think of was they must have made a mistake. Because that last test, the first two, I, I really thought I passed. The first one, missed it by five. I had seven errors that were this and that, imagine. Um, second test, missed it by two. Uh, I had an, I had a misidentification of a speaker. That threw me over the 50 uh, error limit. And then the third test, I had an ear infection. And I just, I only showed up to write it down to prove to myself that this was probably the test that I could not have passed. So it was going to be okay. And I passed. So, I mean, maybe it was the pressure off of me that I knew I wasn't going to pass. So, you know, who the hell cares? And those are all the tests that I have passed, the big ones. When I sat back and for whatever reason convinced my brain that I'm probably not going to pass this. And it's okay if I don't. I'm just going to give it my best and kind of watch me taking the test, um, which gives you a different perspective than if you're in the test, you know, fighting for your life. Totally different dynamics. But I remember, I remember the doubts and I remember the lack of confidence and I remember being terrified and I remember reading back in class and thinking, I never get this. I, I, what makes me think I can do this? But, you know, I don't, I don't, how I said, I, I was explaining to my daughter the other day, she said, why don't you do whatever it was? And I said, because I'm not good at that. And I don't like doing things I'm not good at. And then I remember being in school and I was like not good at any of it. But I just have another part of my personality that said, but you don't give up. You don't just walk away. There was even a point, probably when I had just gotten into 200 words a minute. And there was that part of my brain that said, well, what if we get out? Because all of a sudden that getting out was almost a reality. It was something I could almost see. And this part of me said, what if we get out and you don't like it? <laughs> there was another part of me, thank goodness. No, I do not have multiple personalities, but we kind of all do have multiple parts. But there was another part of me that said, okay, okay, kids, here's the deal. You're going to get out of school. And then if you don't like it, you can go do something else. Now, I had never given myself that kind of liberty before, like, I can go do something else? Yes, you can. After you eat your vegetables, after you clean your room, after you get the freak out of school. Stop putting it off. Just get out and then decide that, yeah, I don't know, maybe I don't like this. There are a lot of reporters that get out in the field and within a year or two, they decide, this is actually a lot of work for the money we're getting. Um, so your heart's got to be in it. You got to love what you're doing to be in it for the long haul. But I remember that point in my career when I was not a good writer, when I was not as competent as I wanted to be. Okay, why am I telling you all this? Because I read one of Christopher Day's posts, which I reposted in Magic for Court Reporters, and it really really hit me hard about the whole scoping thing because I hear this way too often from scopists because I you know I have you guys think I support reporters and students but I'm supporting scopists also not just financially because I am but in a in a career way also and when I hear horror stories 
of scopists who get products from their reporters that are abysmal. It just, it makes me, it makes me angry and makes me, makes me livid. And it makes me want to make um, a video like this to talk to students. You can listen, because this may apply to you at some point, but reporters for anybody out there who has ever given a job to a scopist when you knew it wasn't the best job you could have done. Okay, now there's a conscious awareness element in there because I have given jobs to my scopists when it, it, no matter how hard I tried, it was not the product that I felt worthy of putting my name on for whatever reason. But I called my scopist up front and said, this is the situation we're going into. It was out of control. I could not control the room. I could not slow them down. The witness could not get a full sentence out to save his life. And the attorney kept interrupting him in the middle of, of it all. And it's on a video. And uh-huh and uh-uh were their favorite words. And I would normally have maybe left them out, except they kept referring to the fact that the witness kept saying, uh-huh. Mm, uh -huh. What do you do with that? You let your scopist know what they're headed into and you tell them, you charge me accordingly because this is not my best work and it's not my routine practice to give you this kind of slop. Now, I tell you that because I'm gonna let you know that my scopists and I have had one point had seven of them all working full time. I've got two full-time ones now and they're amazing and, and two overflows if I need them. But every single one of them will always tell me, oh, Carrie, you always do better than you think you do. And it's okay. This is part of my job. Some jobs are crappier than others. And sometimes you are so on your game that, honey, I'm not scoping and editing. I'm proofreading. Wow. I mean, that feels good, you know, pat yourself on the back. But what I want to tell you guys is there are reporters out there who are slopping along. They got a certificate on the wall somewhere. Maybe they got lucky too. But they're slopping along, letting the audio pick it up because, I don't know, they're tired or they just can't get it or they don't have the backbone to say, we are not getting a record. And, and then there's all the expletives that are going on in the back of your brain as you're trying to be professional to these people, but they're not controlling the room. They're not um, still honing their skills to be the best reporter they can out in the field in every moment. Striving for 100%, forget 95% and 97.5% in California, forget it. A good reporter, when you're out in the field, you're aiming for 100% all the time, every day. Because if you can get closer to 100%, then your editing time is reduced immensely. And that means more time for something. For some of us, it's more time to take another job. For some of us, it's more time to do the things we love to do aside from reporting. If, if there are any, as some people, this can be an all-consuming job and we love it, which makes it hard to walk away. But for those of you who as a routine practice, rely on your audio and then rely on your scopist to do the rest of your job, shame on you. And I don't use that S word often, but shame on you. If you're going to do that, then that damn scopus better be getting 50% of what you're billing out on that job, including all copies and everything else, because they are doing your job. They're doing your job. How is that any different than a digital that's being typed up by somebody else? How is that any different? You doing that does nothing 
to promote us as the hallmark, the gold standard of capturing the record. You doing that, you might as well just get, get rid of your certificate, go burn it and go become a digital. Go become a button pusher because that's basically what you are. Maybe you're getting 75% of it. You know what? There's some digitals out there who have a machine who are practicing to try to get certified so they don't have to be a digital anymore. They can be a regular reporter. They're getting 75% of it too. In fact, they're probably getting 80 or 90% of it. They just can't pass that certification. What makes you think you're any better than them? Okay. If the shoe fits, wear it. And if you know somebody... Honor your profession. Since the 70s, in every decade, I have heard, we're going to be replaced. And in every decade, we as professionals, as reporters out in the field, stood up and linked arms together and went to battle to say, no, that's not true. It sounds like you could press the button on a tape recorder, on a cassette tape recorder, and get kind of an audio of what's going on in the room, but you will not get the kind of transcript that you will get from a certified court reporter who has dedicated their life to being the person that guards the record, that shows up, that swears in the witness, that is the one sitting there from beginning to end, and then having total responsibility for that transcript, regardless of if it was proofread or scoped or any process that gets it back to me to have to proofread it, to have to put my name on it that says I'm responsible. I am responsible for this record from the beginning to the end. And that what is what makes me the human factor, the thing that is irreplaceable. In the 70s, it was cassette tapes. In the 80s, it was, oh my God, there's going to be computers. They won't need us anymore. And it has just evolved every step of the way. And then there was real time. I don't care what they come up with. I used to joke, I think it was back in the 90s. Oh, you're going to be replaced by whatever it was they thought this time. And I, I started a story and I said, you know, when there's a holographic capturing of the record so that everything precisely is captured and reduced into readable English, identifying all speakers with all nuances and knowledge of the language and cultures and everything that goes into what I do. When we have the courtroom of the future on the Starship Enterprise, Perhaps I'll think about beginning to wonder if I should retire, but that day ain't today. And that became my story. And it opened a lot of eyes to a lot of attorneys out there that didn't understand what we did. You know, we capture everything. Okay, rant. Welcome to me when I rant. Honor your profession. Be the best you can be. If you're not fast enough to keep up, it's your obligation to tell the attorneys and to walk out, to call and get another reporter. That is your professional obligation. Control it, slow it down, or make a phone call. There's once in my life that I actually told the attorney, I cannot create a record in this environment, but if you'd like me to try to find someone else in the office, I'd be happy to. Of course, they aren't certified in five states. They don't have their national merit, probably. Oh, maybe we can find you a speed champion. I don't know. Maybe Mark Kisslingberry is available today because that's what you're going to need. And he still would probably interrupt you because a record that cannot be captured is worthless. It is. Why are we bothering to put this down on paper if we can't use it later? And the attorneys in this century don't get taught in law school like they did in the olden days where they had to take a class called how to make a record. Why are we doing what we do 
Why do we ask the questions we ask? Why does it get down, put down on paper? Why does it get certified? Why does it get sealed? Why does it get handed to the court in a sealed condition? There are logical, legal answers for all of those. Most attorneys, most young attorneys who haven't taken an extra step to figure out why am I doing what I'm doing, produce crap. And unfortunately, we, we are relegated to transcribe the crap that comes out of their mouths. I can only do what I can do with what is given to me to work with. But boy, I'll tell you, when you get an attorney who is in contempt of court reporter, they're going to get the most verbatim transcript that any reporter on the face of the earth has ever created, and they deserve what they get. Okay, I got work to do. Guys, take take care. Please be the best you can be. If you want to be in this profession, honor it. Honor you. Be the best you can be. Don't slop along. Don't give a half of a product. If you're going to do, go do something else. Seriously. Even though there's a shortage, go do something else. There are a lot of people out there trying really hard to become certified in whatever method and to try to capture the record 100%. And if you're not one of them, please, there's a door. I do love you. I wouldn't yell at you, at you like this if I didn't. Guys, take care.